How's it going everybody? My name is Loxavian and today we're going to be taking a look at optimization. For this test, I'm going to be using the new range engine. It's version 1.42. This new version just came out a little while ago, a couple days ago I think, and I'm kind of interested to see how it runs. But for this test, this will work for pretty much any version of Blender from 2.9, 2.5. Uh, if you're using those versions and I will be doing a 0.3 test as well for the EV uh, render just to see if uh, I can get similar results in a future video. So we're going to be starting with a non-optimized scene. I kind of want to see how far I can push the, uh, the Blender game engine with no optimization on this. Right now I just have a cube and I'm going to be duplicating this cube as many times as Blender will allow before it gets so unplayable uh, that we just can't do anything. So these are the nodes that I have on this cube. It's basically just a collision and a property with an HP setup. So kind of uh, Minecraft style breaking blocks. Let's see how the engine runs just with this amount. And as you can see, we're still running at 60 FPS. And I can break blocks. Got a little effect going on here just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And with this amount of blocks, we're uh, we're not really affecting our performance all that much. You can see we're kind of going between 59 and 60, but that's just because of the V-Sync we have on. And everything looks pretty good. Got a nice little uh, little cube thing here. Now we're going to uh, push this even further. Let's select all these blocks. Oh, and it is chunking now. You can just see that frame rate already. This is the non-optimized scene. So now we have 24 square across as well as 12 down. Let's see how it runs in the engine. And oh yeah, you can see that. <laughs> That's horrible. Um, oh yeah, look at that block of data coming in. I'm still getting used to the new version of range. They've changed a few things. As you can see in the actual engine itself, we have all of our uh, debug properties. And physics is most likely what we're running into right now. Physics and logic are gonna be your two biggest performance drops in the Blender game engine. So, and those are, Physics is okay, but it obviously it is our overall is just running super chunky. Okay, I think that's enough for this scene. Let's go and open and open up our optimized scene. So as you can see, I have the same thing going on, but there's a few different items we have here. In fact, you can see my LOD going. I have it set up to where at 25, you're going to see just a plane, and then once you get up to 50, past 50, it just goes to one vertice. So this is going to cut down on our vertices in the game as we play it, as well as our vertices in the viewport. So hopefully we will get a better result. As well as going into the game, you can see that I added this function here. We have a near that says at a distance of 10, and it's on an invert. If the player is not within the 10 distance, then it's going to suspend our physics. And then once you are within that distance, it will restore the physics. And we just have some simple stuff. It has a cube bound, it's not an actor, and that's it. So we have LOD and we have a physics stop going. Let's see how this runs if we do the same thing. I'm gonna speed this up so I don't bore you with uh, this amount. All right, and we're back. So now we have the same amount of cubes in our scene. It does still feel laggy, but something, it does feel a little bit better than it was before. As you can see that it is only rendering. In fact, I wonder if I get really far away and go out of this view. Oh yeah, so <laughs> now that it's only rendering like certain parts of it, 
like you can tell once I go really far away uh, and it's only rendering these points the lag goes down significantly but once I kind of go in here and I'm rendering more uh, faces now the uh, the lag gets a little bit worse but it is nowhere near the amount of lag that we were getting with the non-optimized scene so now let's go into the game and see what our stuff is like oh wow that is interesting so we got more data points here and here's our block data coming in the amount of logic that is running has increased significantly so that's probably from our uh, our near so our near node is probably doing all this logic I thought that having the physics turned off it does appear that not having physics turned on did turn down our physics amount but the amount of logic that we're running is really taking over and crunching our scene so as you can see it is actually running even worse now that we have the logic going or more logic on our cubes but our rasterized layer has gone down so it is less rasterizing so it's not rendering as many uh, faces or vertices and polys that we usually would be that is really interesting the logic is taking over okay what can I do to get this logic so it's taking up so much how can I so let's do another test actually I'm kind of interested let's take this off and instead we're going to put a state in so we're going to use the state system for logic let's connect this in here this is completely new to me I haven't tried this out before and then let's say set state we're gonna go for the second state here so now when it is uh, if it is not in range uh, give it a distance of 10 when it is in range set the player back to go to another state back to our collision state so let's say let's add two states here and we're going to go set state and set it back to our original and then we're going to go remove state and remove our other state here so I'm interested to see what that's gonna do if it does anything who knows if it is even like if it's actually gonna do anything wanted to set this state and we'll add a remove state on this one too state move state, this state okay and as a little test let's see what that does I don't even think it's gonna work <laughs> uh, let's just apply it to everything so we're going to hit three on the numpad we're in ortho graphic view and then just select everything boom spacebar copy I already had it there I don't know why I did that copy logic bricks to selected so this is gonna take a while because I'm copying it to a lot of objects and it's going to not respond just let it do its thing oh yeah okay so it worked <laughs> but now to actually see if it worked uh, let's just uh, deselect everything thank you and now let's try going into the game here Did that do anything okay we got some more FPS just a little bit more we got some gaps now if I move is it oh man is crazy look at that graph the way that's moving all oh, those spikes so we have like a cease in logic and then logic just pumps back up if I stay still better FPS and when I move oof cranks it and then goes back oh Oh, and look at the physics. The physics have also gone up since I got rid of the, uh, the physics state when it suspended the physics. 
Well, I think that's going to conclude our test for uh, the Blender game engine and seeing if we can optimize it. I don't think uh, I don't think it's possible to optimize BGE with uh, logic nodes. If you use logic nodes, it's going to impact your performance. The amount of objects you have that has logic on it is a big impact. Rasterize doesn't really have a huge impact on your uh, performance for the most part, unless you have a ton of polys. A big part of uh, getting rid of uh, performance lag from rasterization is making sure your polys have good quads on them, making sure you don't have unnecessary triangles and stuff like that. But yeah, logic is definitely going to be one of your biggest uh, performance hits as as well as physics. Physics is going to be a big performance hit. That's going to be anything that's colliding with each other. If you have uh, meshes intersecting each other, um, anything that's going to have a static or rigid body, pretty much anything that's going to have a collision on it is going to uh, lower your performance. So using that sparingly is going to be a big thing. If you have uh, maps that are huge and Maybe you have uh, segmented maps that you have uh, spliced together, making it so uh, you turn off the physics for those, the ones that are out of the player's sight. You might end up with a performance loss just a bit from the logic that you're putting into it. Another way to get your logic to not uh, give you such a big performance hit is also going to be setting your frame tick. So if you have something that's, okay, you wanna turn the collisions off, but you don't want it to be running every single frame for your logic, just turn your, uh, go to your logic node and the skip button, set it to like 10. That means it's only going to register this node every 10 frames instead of every frame. That's gonna help you out a ton. This might've been a longer video, I'm not sure. It's kind of interesting seeing what, uh, what happens with the Blender game engine, seeing what uh, affects your performance. This wasn't really an instructional tutorial or anything. This is just me kind of going around testing things. If you enjoyed this kind of video, uh, leave a like, leave a comment of your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video.